Hi, I'm Rob Brayton. Welcome back to the Star Cave. So in the last video we captured Venus and in this video I will show you how to edit Venus using a program called Astro Surface. So here we go. First thing, obviously, I'm going to assume that you know how to download software. So we'll go ahead and bring up Astro Surface. And the first thing we do is uh, Files, Open, AVI or SER. And this is our Venus right here. So we'll double click. And then it brings us to a color decoder. This was shot with a monochrome camera, so obviously it's monochrome. If we shot with a color, uh, usually three, but maybe one of these others would be selected. So we say load this, and it's loaded. It's just almost instantaneous. And then uh, there's a whole bunch of tools in here, but really all that we care about for this exercise, at least, is the analyze slash register. So let's analyze register project. And for uh, small objects in deep sky, we're going to use a similarity. If we were doing a surface like the moon or something, then we might use that cosine TR, but we're going to use similarity. The 85 pixels is good. All this is good. Let's click detect. So you see the number one there? Two, three, four, five. Okay, so we clicked on the number one and then it draws the yellow box. Just double click inside that yellow box. Now, because I have such a large image here, it's only choosing part of what I want to uh, lock in on. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, choose select and then I'm going to draw a box kind of around more the center part of it because what happens is if you draw your box around you know say just this part down here this will be nice and sharp and the rest of it will be blurry and if you do just the top or you get off center a little bit then that part will be sharp and then the other parts will be blurry so I'm going to split the difference and try to pick just the middle part so that was one, and then uh, number two is analyze. We just click on that, and uh, it'll with 5,000 frames, uh, 1K by 1K, it'll probably take about three or four minutes on this processor. So I'll see you when it's done. Okay, so we completed the analyze, and now we just look at the graph, and I usually raise this middle bar up to about somewhere in the center there so 812 I'm gonna go a little higher than that uh, okay and then uh, so this is the number yeah you, know, you could just enter a number here I'm going to use global I found that the multi points really doesn't work that great I'm not doing RGB so I deselect that. I don't want to save it in a separate directory. I make TIFFs, not PNGs, and I know with 1200 frames I can do a drizzle of two. So now we stack. And the stacking process is relatively fast. For one thing, we're only using 1600 frames instead of 5000. And all the heavy lifting was done when we did the analyzing. So here we go. Okay, so at this point then, this little window pops up and I click on the edit. And I'll say, oh, we're analyzing, what do you want to do? Well, you have to close it. It'll only do one thing at a time. So I'm going to get this little window out of the way here. And our next step is wavelets. So we click on the wavelets button. This uh, helper box comes up and we can see that process ROI is checked 
So that means we have to go find an ROI before we do anything else. So let me go grab this. That's as big as it'll go. Okay, so now, um, first thing, I, I usually reset, and then the first thing I want to do is set this to very fine. I don't Standard doesn't even do anything. It makes it look worse. So very fine is first thing I do. And then uh, we'll just start clicking up a few settings here and see what happens. We have sharpen the high frequencies, that would be small details. Sharpen the low frequencies, that would be the bigger things. So if I sharpen LF, you'll notice the uh, it kind of gets overexposed a little bit there. Especially, let me turn it all the way up. See how it just gets way overexposed right there. And uh, but that's the LF, I mean the, uh, yeah, the low frequency, the, the big pictures. So you can see how it's working with that. I'm going to just leave that on number two at about in the middle. And the high frequencies, again, we don't have really any high frequencies. In fact, if I think if I probably went too high with this one, what it would find is, see how it's accentuating things that don't even exist. And I had a little bit of stacking problems here with my drizzle. It's bringing out that drizzle problem there, so I don't want to do that. Let me put this at 1x. You can see better. Now, well, to get this out of the way, I guess 1x is too big. Let me shrink it down a little bit. Oop, shrink, shrink. There we go. So, 0.5. So, this is half the uh, size of it. All right, so we'll put this back to uh, just two again and about in the middle. And that's pretty happy right there. Um, we can do deconvolution. This is the Richardson Lucy algorithms. Sometimes I'll have this up to 2.8. It, it really just depends. Sometimes I'll crank this all the way up to six. And that's just, again, it's kind of working with the fine details, uh, deconvoluting the fine details, so a lot of times what it does is it just accentuates the noise. But that's okay, because this this last filter all the way down here, this reduced noise filter, um, man, it really crunches out the noise. So N1 is first step. If it's enough, leave it. But if you have a bunch of really noisy stuff, you might need to go N2. Now X1 and X2, they're kind of, uh, they're overdoing it a little bit, so try to get away with as little a noise reduction as you can. So I'm going to leave that there. And that's looking pretty good. I can change the gain if I need to. And I can change the offset. So the offset's going to take the whole image and just shift it the um, the ADU, the, the brightness of the image, and just shift everything down. So I want to do that because the sky, you know, the sun was still out at the time I shot this. And so I'm going to start pump, uh, bouncing this down and we'll just kind of crush the blacks. Yeah, about there. And now let me do all right here. <clears throat> and I can see how the whole image looks now. So from here I can save as, and I will save as Venus. And I go ahead and put my IR 742, it's just a habit I do, so I know what filter I had. Because there's nothing, uh, you know, I can look at the size of it and kind of figure out if I had a PowerMate, Barlow, whatever, and all of the um, gain settings, all of those are stored in the side file when uh, SharpCap actually captures everything, but you don't know what filter you used. So I put that in there, saved, and now I'm ready to upload to Facebook. So that is what I did with Venus. Let's go ahead and work on now um, well, I have to close this or cancel or okay let's go ahead and look at our um, 
we did capture Mercury, so let's open that guy up. And there it is. Remember it was really being scintillated by the atmosphere. And again, uh, after we open it, let me close this. It gets a little crowded over there. Uh, I'm going to analyze register, analyze. And we're again just doing a uh, planet. So this time I can detect and use the whole thing because Mercury is a lot smaller than Venus. And then we will analyze. Okay, it's a much smaller image. Remember we sized it down to, what was it, 480 by 480? So that's what we have there. We'll go global. Well, first of all, I want to look at my graph. Now you see how the data is a lot more spiky and uh, it's, it has more of a slope to it. Data is not nearly as happy. So in this case, I'm going to kind of come up above that curve there this time not so much looking at the middle but making sure I'm staying above that curve which you know I still end up with uh, 700 or so frames we'll see how that works out <clears throat> I don't have RGB don't want to save in a directory I only do TIFFs again global uh, 700 frames so I'm going to do a 1.5 drizzle and stack and it's really fast okay then we click on edit inside the little pop-up window it's open yes close move this out of my way and we're at 1x it's going to wavelets and it remembers the wavelets I had saved from the last time so I'm gonna press reset and start anew now this is where we have to get real creative with a lot of kind of pushing the data really hard but making sure that we're not um, inventing craters and, and stuff on Mercury. So I kind of have an idea of what Mercury looks like and uh, we're just going to crank everything up really high and see what we end up with here. So we'll go really high on that. Okay, and this is a uh, crater called Murasaki. It's kind of like the Tycho of, of uh, Mercury. So that's good. We're, we're getting that. Let's see what happens if we crank this guy up. Okay, so now we have way, way overdone. That's fine. Pull this back to the middle. Still a little bit overdone. Let's go down to 11. All right, so at this point, I want to start pulling in some of that wonderful noise reduction. So we'll start at half point. See what happens there? It's re it's noise reduction is excellent. Let me pump this up to 2x. So this is twice as big as the final image will be, but this way we can see it better. So we'll go to N2 and see things really get smoothed out. Now don't let all this other stuff throw you concentrate only on the planet and see what we're seeing on the planet. So far I'm kind of liking that. And I can turn these on and off too. I just want to see okay, what happens with just the HF. That's what we have. So the LF is bringing up a lot of that detail. Let me turn that down some so that we're not so, uh, so much blowing out the edge there. Uh, we'll go there. And then uh, we can also turn on our Richardson Lucy deconvolution. And you see that brings up some more of the noise so we can pull down the Lucy noise with this pre filter. So I'm kind of liking that a lot there. Uh, not sure what this is, but this is the third night I've captured. Mercury and it's been there every time so it, it I'm gonna assume it's a feature on Mercury and I also see something else coming in here Mercury rotates very slowly it's it does three rotations for every two orbits so an orbit is 88 days 
88 times 3 divided by 2, you know, days are really long. So when I first, you know, three or four days ago when I first started capturing Mercury, this Murasaki crater was right about here, but now it's moved over to here. So I can actually see the features uh, rotating on the surface. So I, I kind of like that. Let me see if I can take a little more noise out of that. Pull that up just a little bit. Yeah, I think that's, I like that better. So um, we'll play with this just a little more here. Yeah, that's giving me a little bit more contrast, maybe a little too much. And I can always pull this down just a little bit. Yeah. Okay, so I, I like all that. Let me play around a little bit more with the deconvolution here. And un unnoise the deconvolution. Okay, good. And uh, I'm not doing an ROA. That's the whole, whole banana right there. So let's pull down. Remember we had a uh, really bright, the sun was still up, so pull down some of that sky. I don't have to pull down all of it. Okay, I like all that. So we're going to save as, and this will be Mercury. 742, that's the filter I used. <clears throat> Alright, so I'm done with that. Now I'm going to bring up Affinity Photo and show you my final. Uh, this is kind of extra. So <clears throat> a lot of times if I'm just doing a really quick edit, what I did in Astro Surface, that's as far as I go. But if I like the data a lot, I'll go ahead and bring it into Affinity Photo to try and just give a little bit more emphasis of the data, a little more interest to the image overall. So we'll go to File, Open, and uh, see we need to be on the 20th. Oh, 20th, there we go, and Mercury, and there's our Mercury. Okay, so I'm not going to really do a lot here. Um, I will increase 150, uh, go 200% on it. <clears throat> and now what I'm going to do is I have all this background and I have this little rim up here that I know looking at my images of mercury that I have access to there's not a there's no polar caps on mercury so I need to get rid of these extraneous things the easiest quickest most wonderful way I found to do all that is to go to the elliptical marquee tool and what we're going to do is select just the face of mercury and then black out everything else so oh you know what before i do that i kind of need to black out the rest of mercury there otherwise it's going to appear to be light so let me go here for a second and um let me bring up a, add a uh, curves layer. Okay, there's my curves. And one thing I really like about this is I can click on the picker, go to Mercury, and just uh, click on a little bit of a bright area there, and just kind of pull that up just ever so slightly. Just enough to give myself a little uh, dot here a little point on the curve and then I can go to the background and pick a noisy place in the background and just pull that down. And see that gets rid of all that extraneous noise in the background there. Okay, I like that a lot. Actually that may have been just a little too much. So I'm going to click on that one and then use my arrow keys up, 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 uh, right, 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 right. Okay, and I just want to make sure I'm as black as can be over here. So I may add another curve after I get done with everything else, but I kind of need to get this, the background, pretty much black before I start with the marquee tool. Okay, so I'm happy with that. And now let me go to the marquee tool. So I select the marquee, 
This is the elliptical marquee tool and I'm going to draw a circle around Mercury the size of Mercury. Okay, now I didn't get that centered but I can go left, 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 left to move that over. Right about there, maybe up a couple of notches. Back go to the right, down, right. Okay, I think that's a good place for it right there. So now I have the face of Mercury selected, but I'm trying to get rid of everything else. So need to go to select and invert the selection. <coughs> Now I have a feather at 21 pixels and that was just from the last time I did it and I know that it's it's good so I'm going to leave it. Um, now what I want to do is grab my bucket tool. Let me zoom out a little bit so I can see that yes I'm only selecting the background. So I have the bucket selected. I'm going to go to color and the eyedropper, click on that, double click, so now I have the eyedropper color selected, and do not dump it on the curves adjustment layer, let me control Z, <laughs> select the actual layer, and now dump it, and see how that gets rid of all that background, but what it did not do, and this is one thing that really I find annoying. So let me control Z again. And for some reason this tolerance thing is set at 20%. Set it at 100%. Okay, so now I'm good on the tolerance. And now I can click on that. And you can and, uh, control D to deselect. And there I have Mercury. So how cool is that? That's at 200%. Let me put it down to 100 percent. I like that a lot. Let me go to crop and right there. Okay so that's how I capture and edit the two inner planets Venus and Mercury. Uh, just always be really, really careful that the sun can never hit your primary element. So if you're using a refractor, make sure that the sun never touches that front lens. Because as soon as it touches the front lens, it's going to, in all likelihood, cause a really big problems. It's going to start burning things that you really don't want burnt. And if it touches your primary mirror, just the tiniest little sliver, of sunlight hitting your primary mirror then it'll hit the secondary it's not going to crack the mirror but it's going to then concentrate all that light right down onto your sensor and very possibly kill your camera so let's not do that keep the sun off of your uh, primary element at all times uh, if you're if you're in a case where you don't have neighbors houses where they're really hard thing that for the sun to go behind you have neighbors trees man I don't know because if 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 those leaves just parted just a little bit and any little part of that sun hits your uh, primary element of the telescope and then it's focused right onto your sensor you could end up with some really big problems but uh, so stay safe out there but enjoy Venus and Mercury. Thanks for watching.